Okay, we have networking set up on our CentOS server. You can see I've issued an if config command here, and you can see that we have ETH0 and ETH1 set up. On the WAN side, we're going to be the address 2.104, and we've picked up this IP address from my wireless router, and we configured this, we set this to DHCP, and we set the IP address for this interface, ETH1, to 111.1, and we use the network manager to do it, but I'll be talking about alternative methods too. Um, so this is essentially the situation that we have right now. We have our CentOS server, and on this side, we are 192.168.2.104. We picked up an IP address from the wireless router. And over here on ETH1, we're going to be 111.1. .1. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to turn this CentOS server into a router. Uh, it's going to handle NAT. It's going to be a proxy, transparent proxy, and it's going to do all things so that clients uh, behind it, right, on a uh, on a LAN, on a local area network behind it, will have to go through the CentOS server, right, which will act as a router. It'll forward the data through and then filter all packets. So, what I want to do is cover a few commands. Now, if we were able to set this up just using our network manager right here in CentOS. Uh, I'm pointing to it in the upper right hand corner here. You know, we could right click on it and edit connections, and we were able to do that. But we could also use the terminal to do this too. And if we had a situation where we had a computer like this, and our computer only had one NIC, kind of like the computers in my lab that the students did and we only had one ethernet port on our on our CentOS server and then what we'd have to do is we'd have to set up trunking and set up sub interfaces and VLANs for um, for the CentOS server to connect both networks through one ethernet port on a trunked line to a switch and I'm going to show you how to do that too so we did that in the lab and so this is especially for my students who are going to be working in the lab and we're not here on Thursday nights so what you would do is, the first thing you would do is you would set up the VLANs. So you would say vconfig, right, and you'd say add, and then you'd pick your Ethernet interface. Let's say you only had one Ethernet interface, so let's say it would be ETH0. But your Ethernet interface could be whatever it shows up on your system. It could be ETH0, but it could have a different name as well. So I've put vconfig add ETH0, and if I wanted to add the 110 VLAN, I would say 110 and hit enter. Now I'm not going to do that because I, I don't need that in this situation, but I just wanted to show the command. So this would add VLAN 110 and trunking protocol right on that VLAN to the Ethernet 0 interface. And then what I could do is I could issue the same command again, right? vconfig, let's say add ETH0 again, since we only have one Ethernet interface, and I could add the second VLAN. So let's say 111, right? Or 112 or 113 or 114 whatever your VLAN is for your second VLAN for your private side you would add that there too and so now what you would have is you would have sub interfaces now to configure IP addresses let's say we have sub interfaces now um, right now in the current version of um, Fedora of CentOS um, you can't configure sub interfaces using the network manager tool right the little GUI tool up here so you'd have to do it manually so what you would do is you would say if config eth 0 dot 110 so that would be eth 0 sub interface 110 sub interface right for the 110 VLAN and then you'd put in your IP address so in this case I would put in let's say 192.168 whatever the IP address is that you're going to use for the 110 VLAN. So in our lab for the 110 VLAN we make that the 11 network. Um, even though it says 110 we just the the, not, the network number does not have to match the VLAN but so 11 dot let's say we would say in our lab I would say 104 or 100 or on my current network right here I would say 2.104 right so that would be the IP address on the sub interface for the 110 VLAN and I'd hit enter then I would issue the command again if config eth0.111 for the 111 VLAN and then the IP address so 
Now this time I would use 111.1 .1 because I'm going to be the gateway router on this private side or on the LAN side of this network. So once again using the subinterfaces I'd set myself up to be 111.1. .1. Now if you want to use a non-classful subnet mask you could put it in too here like 255. let's say 255.0.0 would not be classful so you'd have to put that in manually but we don't have to do that so anyway that would set up the um, VLANs and then the sub interfaces on the on the server then the next thing you want to do is set up a default gateway to set up a default gateway in um, from the command line all you have to do is type route add default gateway GW route add default GW and then whatever your gateway is going to be. In this case, on this network where we are right now, it would be .2.1. For my students in the lab, it would be 11.1. So we'd say route add default gateway 192.168.11.1 and hit enter, and that would add your default gateway. And then for adding DNS servers, you would say echo in quotation marks name server and then the address of your name server so in our lab it could be 4. Dot, it could be 192.168.50.1 let's say right in between quotation marks and then what you're going to do is you'll just send that to the resolve.conf file so you'll say send that to root etc resolve.conf right and so that would put the line name server the text line name server 192.168.50.1 into the resolve.conf file and then you would do it again except this time you would append by using a double greater than signs or less than signs and you'd put a second let's say name server so I could put like 8.8.4.4 .8 .4 and I could put that into the same place. All right, so forward slash etc forward slash resolve. Whoops, resolve with just one v. Dot conf, right? And that would put a second name server, append it to the resolve. Dot conf file. So that's how we did it in the lab on Thursday night. Now we have all of this right now set up um, already using the network manager because we're not using one Ethernet port. I actually have on this virtual machine two NICs. I have Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1 and I was able to configure them pretty easily just using um, uh, an, uh, the edit connections function by right clicking here and I could just go into it and edit it. And you can see here that we edited it and set IP version 4 to DHCP. This is on our WAN side so we can pick up an IP address from our wireless router and on the LAN side we set it up to be IP version 4 um, well actually I set that one up manually by the command line so so I did do that one right here using the command line and I did that so that I didn't have to put in any type of gateway address or anything like that so I just did an if config eth1 192.168.111.1 right and that's how we got that in there okay so the machine is set up to go and all we have to do now is turn it into a router so that it can forward uh, packets as a router as opposed to just a regular computer and we also have to set up NATing okay to turn on routing on the server here what we're going to use is we're going to use the command sysctl and let's look at the man pages for it so I'll type man sysctl and if I do that you can see that sysctl or syscontrol it configure kernel parameters at runtime so we're actually going to configure a kernel parameter right now that'll help us to forward packets um, using IP forwarding so what we'll do is we'll say Q for quit right and then we'll say 
and we're going to need to have root permissions which we already do so if you don't have root permissions issue a su dash command and get root permissions so I'll say sys ctl and then dash w because we're going to change a configuration here and then we're going to say net dot ip v4 dot ip underscore forward equals one and by entering this command basically what we're telling the computer is that we're going to turn this machine into a router because we're going to enable um, IP forwarding right and we're going to enable it at the kernel level and we do it by changing this flag at the end to a 1 from a 0 basically to a 1 so we hit enter and now that's been set now that we've done that we're going to issue an IP tables command IP tables and we're going to set up natting on the machine so that it can nat and as packets go across this CentOS router that we're building it will change the packets from private addresses on one side of the network on one side of the router to the public address or whatever the other network address is on the other side of the router so it's going to do network address translation and to do that we're going to issue the IP tables and then dash T for tables so we're looking at the IP tables tables and we're gonna look at the NAT table and we're gonna do a dash capital A for add and we're gonna add a post routing we're gonna add this to the post routing keychain and we're gonna set oops space dash O to the output interface and whatever the output interface is going to be so in this case it's going to be eth0 and then we'll say dash j and then capital masquerade and so masquerade so this is going to set up natting on the output interface eth0 so it'll hide basically the addresses on eth1 as they go out eth0 and change the addresses to the um, to the address on ETH0, which in this case would be 192.168.2.104. All right, so that's set up um, natting on the server. Okay, now let's look at our tables. So we'll say IP tables dash capital L, and what we'll do is we'll look at dash T and the NAT table. We'll hit enter, and we can see here that chain pre-routing all right we did post routing chain post routing masquerade all from any source to anywhere destination 